In a world where science had stepped beyond the realms of humanity, and the search for higher learning had broken all known limits, a subatomic experiment gone wrong caused an uncontrollable fusion reaction to rip through planet Earth. If you're a gamer in the 1990s, I think you'll admit that games back then are a lot different to the way they are nowadays. Nowadays, there's people actually complaining about too much gameplay in a game, and writing articles arguing whether or not the storytelling aspect should take center stage. Yep, that's a real article. But back in the 1990s, games were pretty much all gameplay over everything else, and no better example of this was the first person genre. Descent introduced me to the concept of six degrees of movement, but a title released in 1998 called Forsaken was another one that took that concept and really hit the ground running. Our future has become Forsaken. Developed by Probe Entertainment, it was originally released for Microsoft Windows and the PlayStation 1, with the Nintendo 64 version also being released shortly after, though this one was developed by Iguana Entertainment. And I remember it was a game that also had an, uh, an interesting marketing campaign. While the folks at Night Dive Studios are busy working on the System Shock remake and hopefully acquiring the rights for Blood and No One Lives Forever, in the meantime they've also managed to work their magic again with another remaster, this time for Forsaken. And as you'd expect, it's pretty good. Forsaken didn't really get all that much love back in the day, despite it being a pretty solid Descent clone. And if you like Descent and the recent Overload, well, you're probably going to love this one too. And for good reason, it still holds up pretty well. So, let's talk about it, shall we? Oh. So the story goes that Forsaken occurs sometime in the future when Earth has been bombed to shit and the entire planet has been turned into a wasteland. Everything still on Earth is now up for grabs and you're playing as a bounty hunter slash salvager, I guess, returning to the planet to steal whatever you can get your hands on. Along the way, you'll even come across other bounty hunters who waste no time in trying to blow you the hell up. And once you've beaten these guys, you can even choose to play as them, with each one having their own unique stats. Doesn't really make that much of a huge impact though on how you do, but I mean, I won't look a gift horse in the mouth. Come on. In terms of the remaster, obviously it's able to be run in widescreen at high resolutions with a bunch of different visual options to mess around with. For starters, you can run this thing in 4K if you're an absolute madman, and blowing up polygonal robots at 1080 just doesn't cut it for you. With the graphics settings themselves, the first thing you've got is texture filtering, which is kind of a big one, and does help make things look a lot sharper, which is really what you want. Blood decals is another option, and I think this was probably in the original game anyway, but should always be on. Now to be honest, I didn't really notice that much of a difference whether I had anti-aliasing on or off, but it's probably something you want to try to max out, hopefully without it affecting performance. I've got a pretty decent rig, so I don't think it's something I'd have to worry about, but ideally you want this thing turned up to the max, so the edges don't look all jagged. Then lastly, there's ambient occlusion and motion blur. I think ambient occlusion should always be on by default, and if you're playing with motion blur on, well, you're dead to me. Of course, lastly and most importantly though, there's the field of view. Now, this is the kind of thing that makes or breaks games for a lot of people. And I know for me personally, I find it almost impossible to play games on a low FOV because it just makes me feel sick as a dog. Here I had mine set to around 90 or so, but you can go up to 120 if you're so inclined. And like having your games looking like a goddamn fisheye lens. It does help immensely though, and being able to customize this to your own liking is a good thing. So how's the game itself? Well, I guess it's pretty much intact where it counts most. It obviously plays and controls a lot better with a high resolution and the smooth frame rate, and I don't think you need to do much buggering around with the controls. You can pretty much just hop in and start blowing shit up. Originally Forsaken, I think, had about 15 or so levels, but this remaster has 32. Yeah, god damn. And it also includes enemy types from the Nintendo 64 version. Some of these levels are really long too, I mean some of them are pretty easy and you can finish them in about 10 or 15 minutes, but there's levels here that took me 30 or 40 minutes to get through. A lot of the time the way forward is some kind of wall or some kind of switch or something you're supposed to shoot, and it can be really easy to miss these. On top of that too, the level design is really intricate, putting corridors and passageways in spots that are almost hidden unless you're often looking for them. Hope you don't get motion sickness either, because the way that the screen automatically orientates itself sometimes can make you want to throw up. Not that it's something you can really complain about, look, I mean, more content is always a good thing, and I guess in a lot of ways this is like the most definitive version of Forsaken. It's definitely the most playable and accessible, I mean, that's for sure. And I can't even imagine trying to play this game on the PlayStation 1 or the Nintendo 64, I mean, with that controller, it'd be like trying to fit square pegs into a round hole. I mean, look, no hate against those old consoles, but the controllers for those things is like you're trying to juggle bricks. 
Playing with a mouse and keyboard is fluid and responsive, and it's the way I feel like the game should be played. And I think it's a testament to how solid the original game is design-wise, is that it still plays so well in 2018. Now, whereas in Descent, the levels were pretty much exclusively mining facilities, Forsaken has a greater variety from mission to mission. You'll be navigating through a volcano, an abandoned subway, a prison ship, military bases, and in one level, you're even breaking into a bank vault and stealing as much gold as you can find. It might be a 20-something year old game, but I also think the game looks pretty damn good at times. Texture work is expectedly pretty low resolution, but the way this game uses lighting, particularly colored lighting, is just really artistic stuff. There's a real contrast between the light and dark areas of the level design, which makes it really appealing to the eyes. Also too, during heavy combat, the various particle effects for the weapons and the projectiles being fired, combined with the explosions and the other effects, just looks really cool. And it also seems to be able to pull off a lot of shit happening at once, which is good too. Forsaken also takes influence from Descent 2 in the way that it's an insanely challenging game at times. Yeah, this thing doesn't mess around. Enemies are either stationary, usually some kind of turret, then there's a tank that just follows a preset path, and then you've got the more mobile types that fly around and can pursue you pretty relentlessly, like a Tinder date gone wrong. These enemy types show off some of the game's really impressive artificial intelligence, and it's actually kind of impressive how these guys will strafe left and right to avoid incoming attacks, and generally just make it a bit of a chore to take them out. Now I know I harp on about this a lot, but playing something like this can really highlight how dumb the enemy AI can be in a lot of mod shooters, like the classic punching bag that is the Call of Duty games, where enemies will just often stand in one place, waiting for their turn to catch a bullet with the back of their skull. In Forsaken, pretty much every single thing you come up against has the potential to ruin your day. And even on the so-called normal difficulty, you take a load of damage even from some of the first enemies you encounter. Oh, no! It's also an example of a bygone mechanic in shooters, and that's the mechanic of projectile enemies over hit scanning. Something I think that takes way more skill to master and actually encourages and rewards being mobile. Whereas with the more hit scanning enemy types, there's no real point to moving around quickly because as long as you're in their line of sight, they're gonna hit you. Same thing with the weapons you use. Every weapon is some kind of slow moving projectile. It's usually like a laser, or in the case of the secondary weapons, it's some kind of missile. And you often need to lead your shots and plan ahead of an enemy's movements. I don't know what the deal is with all these 6 degree first person games being ball bustingly hard. Descent obviously was pretty damn hard and Forsaken also manages to get away with this. The difficulty at times can be fucking insane. And a really good run can end in seconds if you bugger up. You've got four difficulty modes here. Easy, Normal, Hard and Mayhem. But what I should really read is Normal, Hard, Even Harder and then go fuck yourself. I can Part of the reason for that is, as I said, the enemies are super mobile and they make it really hard to kill them, which is a good thing, but Forsaken uses a spawning in mechanic for enemies, instead of just having them in preset locations for each map. Sorry again to pull out that descent comparison, but in that game the enemies were in fixed positions, like you'd generally enter an area and they'd be there idle until they saw the player. But here in Forsaken it's different and they often don't appear until you're inside a room or after you've picked up some kind of item or completed a mission objective, which often leaves you at a bit of a disadvantage. Now I think this might have been done because the game was developed for consoles as well as the PC, but then having said that, I don't think I knew anyone who owned this on the PC. So maybe it's like they had to do it that way for memory usage or something on the limited Nintendo 64 and the PlayStation 1. All I know is that it means you can expect to get blindsided a hell of a lot. You can even see your character's brains flying around when you're killed, which is pretty metal. And if that ain't enough for you, enemies will often respawn too. Yeah, sometimes when you're backtracking through a mission, enemies will appear again, forcing you to fight your way back to another gauntlet, just to keep on going. I think the most annoying thing though is when an enemy spawns behind you and you suddenly find yourself getting hit up the ass. Now there is a little rearview mirror that shows you what's behind you at all times, but you're not always going to be focusing on that screen when you're getting attacked from the front. And when you get killed from behind, it just feels cheap. And then you've also got to deal with environmental hazards like jets of fire shooting out of the wall that can kill you in seconds. Yeah, everything in this world hates you, but it's alright because I like you. No! It's almost like in Descent how a lot of the time it was almost better off to let yourself get killed just so you can get a health refill. But I can recognise that this kind of gameplay design was commonplace back then. Games were hard and the developers didn't give two shits about whether or not the player had trouble finishing them. I seem to remember they even released a patch for the PC version that made the difficulty mode substantially easier. But still, you're going to have a hell of a time with this one. But we both know you're going to keep coming back like the little bitch you are, because deep down, you know you love it. So just grit your teeth and take it on the chest. No! 
think I said before that Forsaken is really a product of its time, and I think that's the big takeaway. It still plays pretty well and you can have a lot of fun with it, but just don't forget that this is a game made in 1998. It might look good, it might run well and all that, but it still comes from that era of gaming where games were challenging, and it's the kind of thing that's going to put hair on your chest. Even the music encapsulates that kind of soundtrack you heard back in the day, and again, it's just awesome stuff. In fact, I can't think of a single soundtrack from a shooter back then that I didn't like. Steven Root, who worked on Alien Trilogy, I think worked on this one too, but I can't confirm that. Steven, if you're watching this and you worked on the game, let me just tell you, you did a good job, bro. Oh. The remaster's available on Steam or goodoldgames.com for 20 bucks, and you know what? I think that's pretty damn good value, considering the amount of content you're getting out of it, and it's even going to have a multiplayer component too, in case you want to blow the crap out of your friends as well. Now, Night Dive Studios, stop fucking around and organize the rights for the remaster to Blood and No One Is Forever. And then we're going to be golden. When the Earth is left to die, and the galaxy's vilest progeny roam free, the future of our planet has become forsaken.